final de esta separación. On September 15, we started the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. And throughout the city, we celebrated in many different ways. Usually we would get all together to celebrate, but with what we are going through around the world, we could not do it as we would have wanted to. But today marks the end of the celebration. And with all our partners, we still want to make sure we show all our different cultures, celebrating all the countries that are celebrating their Independence Day during the Hispanic Heritage Month, as we celebrate every other Hispanics. Today we have the Council of Mexico, as well as the Council of Honduras, representing our sister cities. We have two sister cities in Mexico, Mérida and Querétaro, and we have one sister city in Honduras, Tegucigalpa. Though they're dormant, we still want to make sure we acknowledge our sister cities. And so, I'm not going to keep uh, the celebration, I'm just going to let it start. Please welcome our mayor, Mayor Latoya Cantrell. Thank you all so much uh, for being here. Uh, I must acknowledge, of course, our council, Gloria Abrado. Thank you so much, council, for being with us. Our council of Honduras. We have our council of Mexico, council Tito, Livio Morales, Borrello. Thank you so much, Mr. Council. I have to acknowledge our feisty and never ending the hardest working president I know of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Myra Pineda. Thank you so much, Ms. Myra. You're always here, present, right on time for our communities. You are, and we appreciate that. Ms. Rosine Pimasanga, thank you so much for your leadership as being the Director of International Relations for uh, the Mayor's Office. I appreciate you. I'm a Director of Cultural Economy, Lisa Alexis, who joins us as well. Even Eva Hurst, who is our representative for the Americans with uh, Disabilities Act, our coordinator, but more importantly, she is a constant leader in our human relations and equity office for the city of New Orleans, and thank you. And, and I know Bianca is a part of the festivities as well. Bianca's our daughter. I want to acknowledge our Spanish uh, language media you know, Jambalaya is always around, and we, we appreciate that because we have to make sure that we're communicating as best we can to our Hispanic and Latino community and being consistent with that. And Jambalaya is not by herself, by itself, with Telemundo, Viva Nola, as well as Que Paso. Thank you so, so much. Now, as Rosine mentioned, Today is our last day. It's been a long celebration, and we could not end it without uh, doing it in, in our own fashion, right here at City Hall, so that our people understand that this, too, is their home as it relates to government. Today, you know, but first of all, let me say, the impact of our Latino and Hispanic community on the city of New Orleans goes back generations. And you know that we are 300 years old. We would not be that without our Latino and Hispanic brothers and sisters making this city who she really is today. And so today, you are residents, our workforce, our culture bearers, our leaders, our business people, our friends, and our family. Right here in our city, it's you. Now more than ever, now more than ever, we really do treasure you. We recognize the challenges, of course, that our communities face as it relates to this COVID-19 pandemic that hit us hard, and particularly acknowledging the disparity gaps that exist in our community. 
and it has hit front and center our Latino and Hispanic community. So while we are excited not only to welcome the councils from Mexico and, and Honduras, we also understand and we acknowledge that we represent populations of every Spanish-speaking language in the nation and around the world. This year, Hispanic Heritage Month is being celebrated also by our New Orleans City Council as a Hispanic Heritage and Health Month. Councilmember Helena Moreno has just joined us. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. I miss seeing you, love seeing you. I really do, we've been working so hard uh, together. We originally imagined, as, as uh, Rosine mentioned, that we would host uh, this event at the New Orleans and Jazz uh, Museum. But of course, we could not do that, but we're right here because it's just that important. Last night, the Superdome was lit up with the colors of the Mexican flag. And tonight, it's going to be lit up uh, in the colors of our Honduras flag, so we're excited about that. And we are here to celebrate and honor these communities with remarks, performances, and before we get to all the good part, I just want to take a moment to just talk about the connections as it relates to our Latino and Hispanic community in this city. As I mentioned that this pandemic hit us at a deficit, and we learned earlier on that it hit disproportionately our black and brown communities in our city. Our Latino and Hispanic residents make up about 5.6% of our population in our city. But you know what? We learned that as we started testing and setting up those mobile testing sites, really made up 20% of the population as it relates to who tested positive. So right there, we noticed that disparity. And we had to go even deeper. And working with, again, my councilwoman here, we made sure that we did everything necessary to go deep. We went into our communities. We were able to not only get in there, but stop that rate of spread. So what we focused on is not letting the 20% of positivity result in 20% of deaths in our community. This, is always a, this always has been about public health, public safety, and saving lives, human lives. So as a result of that, we have led, not only in this city, we've led in this state and in the nation with stopping that rate of spread, they say curbing this virus, and the rate of transmission. We've done that and we should be proud of that. As I mentioned, not only the mobile testing sites that we activated, but we went even deeper with the councilwoman creating a task force. And when she did this, she understood the need to have all stakeholders at the table. This represented our faith-based community, our nonprofit community, and of course, our consulates right here with us. And of course, we ensured that as we engaged in events, that we made, again, sure that we were able to communicate effectively with our people. And again, as a result, the positivity rate dropped over 11% by September. The results speak for themselves. Going a little bit further with the Mayor's Office of Youth and Families, we worked on getting multiple commitments, but, but the one that I'm most proud of is the $500,000 that we were able to partner and get from Open Society Foundation, where we provided 500 families with cash assistance. And these families were blocked out of any federal or state assistance. So this, again, was about meeting our people where they are, being creative in our approach, but making sure we got it to our people in a timely manner and where they would not feel um, like it wasn't for them, because it was for them. So doing something intentionally for the community was something that really has made me very proud to do, and will continue to do that. Also, as it relates to the Mayor's Office of Cultural Economy, again, Lisa will give you a little bit more details in regards to that, but embrace the culture grew out of this pandemic, and our first cultural series of Embrace the Culture embraced our Latino and Hispanic community. Now, we started this cultural series pre-COVID, but we knew we had to do something special in the midst of this pandemic. It's more that Lisa will share with you about that. Also, as relates to the census, I can't leave it out. 
because today marks the last day now to complete the census. And so while, and I always, you know, you've heard me say this, 2010 was the last census count, as you know, but our people were still displaced all everywhere. So really our last accurate count was in the year of 2000, where we showed up about 61% in terms of response rate. When we looked at 2010 data, we were right at 43% in terms of our response rate. Well, today, and because of the hard work, again, in partnership, we're at 58% in terms of responses. That is a huge win for this community, for this city. But we still have today to go. So I wanted to make this last plug because it will mean dividends for our communities and particularly in the areas that we know those disparity gaps live and where we're focusing on as a top priority. So before I end, what I will say, the last day of the census is today, but the first day of early voting is tomorrow. And so this is another way that we as a community can show up and make sure that our voices are heard as well. So without further ado, I have to bring to the podium, as I mentioned, this fierce president, Ms. Myra Pineda, representing the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Myra, come on up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First of all, I'd like to, on behalf of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, thank the mayor of the city of New Orleans, this great city that houses a wonderful Hispanic community as we celebrate and as we conclude the Hispanic Heritage Month. Indeed, the Hispanic community makes an important part of this beautiful tapestry that is our great city of New Orleans. So as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and the conclusion of it, our culture, our heritage, our work ethic, and also our resilience. It's also a reminder that we have to continue working tirelessly to build an equitable community with access to many opportunities for all. And the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is committed to continue working, building bridges, advocating for our community, providing a skilled workforce, and also resources for our business community to thrive, build wealth, and economic development for the city of New Orleans. So let's celebrate today, but I want to echo the mayor's words. And remember, we have one more day to complete that census, and please go out and vote. Thank you very much. Proud Honduran, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you Consul of Honduras, uh, Ms. Gloria Alvarado.
queremos reconocer a todos aquellos latinos que han alcanzado no solo los logros muy importantes y han alcanzado aquellos peldaños en, en oficinas o eh, en puestos uh, eh, muy importantes, eh, que han alcanzado logros en la medicina, en el deporte, en la ingeniería, pero también queremos honrar pues, a toda la comunidad que ha venido, a toda la comunidad latina que ha migrado de este país y, y que trabajan duramente, que también han dejado un aporte muy importante a la comunidad, no solo económico, pero también cultural. Y qué hablar, qué decir de la gastronomía, ¿verdad? Me imagino que a todos eh, les gusta la comida latino, la latina. El deporte, hemos tenido también muchos, muchas figuras latinas que han eh, logrado eh, 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 alcanzar con muchas metas. Así que muy orgullosos de nuestras raíces, muy orgullosos de ser latinos y muchas felicidades a todos en el mes de la herencia hispana. Sigan adelante. Gracias.
we will keep now this task force uh, moving on in just perpetuity to continue our work to support and uplift the Hispanic community here in the New Orleans area. So once again, I'm just so thankful for, for the work. All of us here in the city of New Orleans are our family, and that's how we need to treat each other. Todos aquí en Nuevo Orleans somos familia. O sea que todos necesitamos apoyarnos. Todos son importantes. Y todos, como dije, somos familia aquí en Nuevo Orleans. So um, just remember, as the mayor said, the census ends today, but tomorrow, first day of early voting. So get out there and vote. Tenemos que votar porque sí se puede. Gracias. so much and I just would like to share Madison that was an awesome performance and I would like to thank you again for honoring us with your performance you first appeared in the mayor's concert series at Gallagher Hall so good to see you back with us and I would like to also share the Office of Cultural Economy we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month we, we truly celebrate Hispanic heritage, and in doing so, the office has created Hispanola, and that will be taking place on Fridays at the New Orleans Jazz Museum, where we will have Hispanic artists and Latino artists performing from across the world, who are local here, and it will be going forward through November 20th. And as important as the performances that are taking place is the fact that I would like to encourage all of our citizenry citizenry to support our Hispanic heritage by supporting our culture, our Hispanic culture, all throughout the year, through supporting businesses and art and, and music and cuisine. So all throughout the year, it is very important. And so I appreciate you having me here this morning, and I am now going to present the proclamation that will go forth to our artists. It reads, whereas, the city of New Orleans is recognized internationally for the rich diversity of its culture and the multiple national influences that have merged to make the cultural gumbo that makes the Crescent City unique. And whereas Spanish influence in New Orleans extends back as early as 1736 with early immigrants coming to the Crescent City from locales such as Spain, the Canary Islands, Cuba, Mexico, Santo Domingo, Spanish Morocco, Puerto Rico, and other areas in the Spanish crown. And whereas after Katrina, the Hispanic Latino influence in New Orleans has expanded to include a more robust presence of individuals from Central American nations who have contributed to the rebuilding of this great city. And whereas the Hispanic population continues to advance communities here in New Orleans and all across the country as small business owners, cultural bearers, veterans, teachers, and public servants, among many other professions, making their impact both widespread and powerful. And whereas the Latin American countries of Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, Chile, and Belize celebrate their Independence Days in the period spanning from September 15th to September 18th, and whereas each year Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Spanish-speaking nations of the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And whereas the observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988, which was enacted into law on August 17, 1988, upon the approval of Public Law 100-402, and whereas the city has observed National Hispanic Heritage Month 
by recognizing accomplishments and contributions of Hispanics in every aspect of our residents' lives, including their cultural heritage, public service, entrepreneurial spirit, and social, cultural, and economic development. And therefore, in recognition of your outstanding contributions in celebrating, preserving, and sharing the Hispanic culture with the City of New Orleans, I, Latoya Cantrell, Mayor of the City of New Orleans, hereby salute you as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. It will be given to our artists in witness whereof I hereunto set my hand and cause the great seal of the city of New Orleans to be affixed this 15th day of October in the year of 2020. Latoya Cantrell, Mayor, City of New Orleans. Gracias. Will Bianca San Martin come forth? Madison Guzman, come forth. Belinda Avila, come forth.
entender el destino Voy a escuchar el silencio Para encontrar el camino ¿Y para qué llorar? ¿Para qué? Si duele una pena Se olvida ¿Y para qué sufrir? ¿Para qué? Si duele una pena Se olvida La, la, la Oh, yeah.